Hello. So far, we have already learned about different components of a grid cluster. Now we are going to see the full picture. Let's start. Firstly, we have a set of event streams coming from different data sources. These event streams are meant to be handled by real-time nodes. But before that, they are accommodated into a message bus such as Apache Kafka. Real-time nodes, they load the events from message bus and then ingests them incrementally to an in-memory index buffer, which is basically a JVM heap-based buffer. So to avoid heap overflow problems, these in-memory indexes are converted into a column-oriented storage and then persisted into a local disk. Later, these indexes are loaded into a off-heap memory so that the real-time nodes can continue on serving them along with the indexes in the in-memory buffer. Now let's see the segment creation part. Real-time nodes, they run a background process, which from time to time checks for all locally persisted indexes, and then it collects them, merges them together to form an immutable block of data, which Druid refers to as segment. The segments are then stored into a distributed file system such as HDFS, which Druid refers to as deep storage. This whole process is called data handoff. A real-time nodes that announces their uh, on state to the zookeeper and also maintains uh, the communication with the other uh, nodes in the Druid cluster through it. These uh, segments created by real-time nodes are loaded by historical nodes. So the historical nodes, uh, they mainly serve uh, these immutable blocks of data that comes to them. And basically these immutable blocks of data are the most generated data in Druid cluster. So we can say that, say that historical nodes are the heartbeat of any Druid cluster. Like real-time nodes, the historical nodes also announces their own state to Zookeeper and they also inform about the segments they are currently serving. So far we have seen two types of nodes which are responsible for serving any query. Now we are going to see another node which acts as a query router for these two nodes. Here comes the broken nodes into the picture. Uh, these broken nodes, they receive the queries from the users and then it communicates with Zookeeper to know which segments are queryable and where they are located. It also maintains a distributed key value storage such as a memcache where it maps uh, the query and the related segments uh, to that query. So after it receives a query, it first checks its cache to find out which segments are uh, needed for that query. Then it sends the query to the relevant real-time and historical nodes. After the real-time and historical nodes have uh, finished, uh, finished serving the query, they send partial results back to the broken nodes. Broken nodes then collect these result, uh, results and then form a consolidated result and send it back to the user. Like, uh, uh, so the last part that we are going to see, uh, the last um, type of nodes in a uh, Druid cluster are the coordinated nodes. Like uh, these nodes, they mainly serve the purpose of instructing historical nodes on how to load new data, how to drop data, how to move, uh, how to replicate or move data for load balancing. Like all other nodes, it also maintains a connection to Zookeeper. So uh, it uh, maintains it uh, it maintains a connection to Zookeeper to know about the current state of the Druid cluster. It has also another additional dependency, which is a MySQL database. So in this database, there can be a, a different number of tables, but one key uh, one, inf one in important table is where the information about which segments are to be uh, served by a historical nodes are stored. So the coordinated nodes, they can know uh, about uh, the segments that should be served by the historical nodes and then instruct uh, the historical nodes to uh, perform appropriate actions. This table, it can be accessed by any node uh, that can create segment. So we know that real-time nodes are uh, also capable of creating segments. So you can see that they also have access to this table. So this was a brief overview of the Druid architecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Now let's go back to the presentation.